Hello, everyone, and welcome to BPF Summit. My name is Alexey Starovoitov, and I'm excited to do the first talk at this excellent conference that every year brings the best speakers in our ever-growing BPF community. Let's begin with a brief look back at the history of BPF. It all began in September 2013, nine years ago, uh, on this post. We were aiming to build programmable networking in the Linux kernel. PlumGrid was the name of the startup that pioneered this technology. But it was Cilium creators who took that vision to the next level. Today, Cilium provides bridge router NAT SBPF programs as open source components that community can build upon. Cilium includes many other networking, security, and observability features all powered by BPF. The takeaway is the ideas are cheap. It's execution that matters. That September month was very active. BPF was proposed as an engine for socket filters, SECOM, as a flow detector, and even as an open v switch extension. It's interesting to look back at these events and notice that proposals one and three came through while BPF SDCOM is still a hotly debated topic. The BPF integration with OVS never happened though, since OpenFlow hype crashed quickly. Here is another interesting historical quote. It talks about safety and excellent performance of BPF programs. We stayed true to this motto during all these years. But there are two mistakes in this quote. The first, compile BPF with GCC. Well, it's not quite there yet. Everyone is using client compiler while GCC is trying to catch up. The second mistake is our gross understatement of how complex the, the BPF verifier will be. The algorithm used by the verifier may be simple, but overall it's the most complex piece of BPF core and we're definitely going to work on simplifying it. Today, we are celebrating eight years and two days since BPF instruction set became the standard for kernel programmability. What an amazing journey it's been. I was wondering what motivates me to keep working on BPF. Why some developers appear in the community, do exciting work and disappear, while others stick around for years. I believe it's a shared sense of purpose. The sense of doing something big is what unites us. It took me a while to discover my own mission statement. I found, I discovered it. It is to innovate and enable others to innovate. I learned that the personal mission cannot be created or borrowed. It can only be discovered and it doesn't change over, over the years. I knew I liked the code since I was a kid, but coding can be a chore. The innovation through the code is what drives me. It's only the first part. The second part is enabling others is equally important. I've seen people became maintainers of a project and eventually lose interest. Their code reviews got slower, which forced developers to leave and the code to be dropped. It's the case of missing purpose in the maintainership. BPF speaks to both parts of my mission statement. It satisfies my own thirst for innovations through occasional coding that I thankfully have time for and allows me to help other developers to innovate. I see exciting work that people do in the verifier. They create technologies like XDP or apply BPF in other kernel sub subsystems like human interface devices, scheduler, memory management, being a maintainer allows me to help them innovate in those areas. And boy, the stats don't lie. We see 50 to 70 emails a day on the kernel mailing list. That's a lot of traffic. 
the group of four PPF maintainers has to read and reply to every single one of them. Without purpose in maintainership, it would definitely feel like a chore. The number of monthly active developers also grows. We're close to 140 at this moment. Notice this is kernel and BPF developers only. This is not it, of course. BPF technology sparked the innovation in user space. Just look at BPF.io website. It has a list of most prominent objects. It's a long and inspiring list. But back to the kernel. The support for Rust language will land during the next merge window. Eventually, drivers and core kernel components will be written in Rust. Some people wonder, what does it mean for BPF? It's remarkable that BPF and Rust share the same goal, make kernel programming safe. There is a subtle difference, though. Rust Linux is trying to reduce the number of kernel bugs with the help of the language and compiler. But quote, quote, unsafe adapters from C to Rust has to be written and reviewed by humans. It's a full featured language that is trying to stay safe within constraints. And I suspect they will achieve that goal. The kernel will become safer and easier to program with Rust. In contrast, in BPF, we're using restricted C. It's a subset of C that is not trying to be safe. It is safe from ground up. The BPF C was certainly very restrictive in the beginning. There were no global or static functions. Everything had to be marked as always in line to force compiler to generate one single quote quote function slash program. Things have changed a lot over eight years. There are loops now, global variables and functions. There is a link here and BPF libraries. The support for task, inode, cgroup local storage that is similar to thread local storage we used in user space. But the most important event that happened in the BPF land was the introduction of C language extensions. They made compile once run everywhere or core technology possible. Some people think that core only needs libpf support and btf type format in the kernel. Not quite. It starts from attribute preserved access index. It's a generic C language extension, currently supported by LLVM BPF backend only. But it can be made to work on any other architecture, including x86, of course. At the early compilation phase, the client represents field access to data structures marked with this attribute as symbolic load store instead of regular load store, which is register plus constant. Later, LLVM BPF backend converts it into normal instruction and relocation information. That type and relocation is what libpf is using to adjust the field offset. The key takeaway here the C language extension allows BPF programs to be portable across kernels, even when they look at kernel internals. There are two ways to write portable programs. The first approach is to rely on stable API. For networking programs, it's easy to do. To implement a firewall or a router, the BPF program doesn't need to be kernel dependent. It needs to parse and maybe modify a network packet with just a genetic sequence of bytes. Why does the program need to be stable, people ask? Well, because there are many different districts with their own kernels, even within one data center controlled by one company like Google and Meta. There are hundreds of different kernel versions. But the applications can only afford to build and test their BPF programs on a few kernels. The second approach is to use core Technology to as isolate the program from data layout changes within between the kernels. There are stable BPF hooks where program can attach, like XDP, NTC. Unstable but portable BPF programs can attach anywhere, which makes them a lot more powerful. The set of unstable hail helpers, also known as KFUNCs, is growing. Soon it will be much bigger and feature rich than stable helpers. 
One such example, such example is KPTR or kernel pointer. The stable programs cannot easily interact with kernel objects. They have to isolate themselves through stable layers. Then stable programs on the other side can access all kernel objects and soon will be able to stash selected objects like task struct, socket, connection tracking state into KPTR enabled maps. The programs will be able to allocate their own objects. Here is how it might look like. BPF core type ID local macro will convert C type to BTF type ID, which will be passed to KPTR new helper. Then the verifier will automatically know the size of the type. In this case, the size of struct foo. It will also automatically initialize relevant fields of the structure. It is similar to C++ operator new, but unlike C++, this is true safe C. The safety is enforced by the verifier. For example, the program cannot type cast the return pointer from struct foo to struct bar and access it. The verifier does the type checks. The memory leaks so obviously prevent it as well. The program cannot allocate the object and just return. The program would have to stash the pointer into a map of read. The verifier will provide implicit destructors for the object. There is no garbage collection here. When the program stores object in the map and exit, the map destructors will recursively flee free KPTR's objects too. The program will be able to chain allocated object into linked list, red black trees, and many other data structures. We are standing at the beginning of the next phase of the innovation. Crossing fingers, but I think we figured out a way to statically enforce spin lock correctness. The basic idea is that lock and the object it protects are part of the same allocation. The verifier will know which lock protects which link lists and will enforce that correct lock is taken before operations on the link list are performed. The link list head and arbitrary root, as in this example, have to be annotated with types of objects that they will chain. This is achieved with another C language extension. It's called BTF type tag. We will provide a helper macro underscore underscore contains in this example. The clank will store the annotation in the program code and later the verifier will use it to enforce safety. I do believe it's a mind blowing and very exciting. Back to Rust and BPF comparison. Rust kernel modules are certainly a safe alternative to traditional kernel modules written in C, while unstable BPF programs are getting close to be seen as safe and portable kernel modules. Portability may not be a concern for Rust community right now, but if it is, it would be interesting to see what Rust community will do to make Rust kernel modules portable. I suspect it will require Rust language extensions. And we would love, we as a BPF community would love to share the lessons we've learned and tricks that we do. If BPF can enable further innovation in Rust, it will be exciting. There are plenty of other BPF features we are thinking about. One of them is assertions. The BPF users complain about the verifier non-stop. It's the most dreaded gatekeeper. The users believe that the verifier is too dumb to prove the safety of their programs. So, well, we're thinking, all right, let the users tell the verifier what they believe the bounds and conditions of the programs are. The verifier will assume that the assertion is true and will proceed to verify the rest of the program. But it will also insert a runtime check of that assertion. If it fails, the whole program will be aborted. It should be rare, assuming the user is correct. The obvious challenge here is how to unwind the stack and terminate the program safely. Dual compilation of the kernel itself into x86 and BPF at the same time is another interesting idea. It will allow inlining of k funks into program, life patching, and so on. Imagine you want to implement a memcached in a kernel with one BPF program per connection. If the kernel can run thousands of instances of the same BPF program, each program can process requests completely synchronously while the BPF intro will schedule them in one kernel thread. 
So it's five percent in kernel. Crazy, maybe not so crazy ideas, but we're out of time. Uh, thank you for listening and for innovating.